Okay, thank you everyone for showing up at this safety meeting today. Oh, well, thank you Tim for bringing the cookies and the cake and setting up the coffee early. We're going to go ahead and let Mr. Vagram get started so we can uh, hear what he has to say about this new Tesla coil nonsense. Okay? Okay, let's get started. There's been a lot of confusion as exactly how these pesky little monstrosities actually work. Basically, Tesla coils are used as a part of mechanism induction, the mechanism mod, by Aiden C. Brady. And uh, Tesla coils themselves are used to transmit power over short to medium distances. Now, they can transmit power interdimensionally, but it's kind of complicated, and I'm not going to get it in, into it this episode. I'm just going to get you started with them so you know how to use them. That's it. Very, very simple. Basically, you have the base. You have to have two of these, and they're going to have to be at least two blocks high. Now, you're seeing a lot of lightning bolts and things flying through the air. Mostly, that's because of those larger towers back there, not these two. These two are actually not transmitting. Right now, they're too far apart. A two block high, a starter, basically, of the Tesla coil, two blocks high, will only transmit about three blocks. Basically, it would go to about there. That's about it. So what you have to do is add more to the height to get them going. And you'll hear, there's that sound. And the kick to life. Now, while that buzzing goes on in the background, here's the trick. This one is transmitting. I'm going to break this block underneath it. This one is transmitting because they take power from the sides. You have to put a power cable into the side of the base block. That's where they accept it. When they receive power, which is what this one is doing, they push it out the bottom, which is where that power cable is, to whatever place they are going to store it. Now these things have barely any battery storage. You don't want to use these for power storage. You want to hook them up to power storage. Now you'll see the multimeter right here is going up slowly but steadily. And over here, this one is going down slowly but steadily. Basically, this one on the left is relaying this one on the right. Now when they're two blocks high, it's too far for them to jump the gap. As soon as they're three blocks high, all of a sudden, they can bridge this four-block gap. Three is the minimum for that height. So basically, the higher they are, the farther they go. These are one, two, three, four, five, six units high. And they are bridging a considerable gap, as you'll notice. And what I'm going to do, put some juice into that one. This one's going to start receiving. And it's already got a cable right there. You'll see it's blinking, it's blinking, and it's going. And it's going to keep going, basically, until its transmission source stops. Very, very simple. They take in power from the side in order to send it out. And then over here, they receive it and push it out of the unit through the base. This means that you really want to strategically set up your power network. You don't want to have this. Or I guess more appropriately, let's go over here. Break the block. You don't want to have that. You see how the cable is lit up 100%? That's bad. Specifically because what it's doing is creating a power loop. And power loops basically end up wasting a lot of your energy, and it never actually transmits anywhere. You want to carefully set these things up. Now, there is something you can do if you have an empty hand, like I do right now, empty hand. You walk up to one and just right-click. You'll see this message in chat, Tesla receive mode is now false. That means this one is not going to receive power anymore. Receive mode true. All of a sudden, it is receiving power. And that should start going up slowly, but surely. There you go. Now, it's hard to get large numbers of power, large amounts of power, 
transmitted over a distance with just one Tesla on either end. What I usually end up doing is using them in either pairs or trios on each side. They're great for bridging gaps. They're great between buildings. They work wonders. And plus, they just kind of look very mad sciencey. And these are even taller. I've actually lost count. I think those are either eight or nine blocks tall. And I could probably have these things even farther away than they are right now. The higher you get them, the bigger the distances you can spread between them. I've heard of people jumping 40 to 50 block gaps between two towers just because they kept building the Tesla coils up and up and up. And this is all exactly the same block going straight up. The model just changes the higher up it gets. I'm going to get back here. Did I, oh, I did not. So, that one starts going crazy. Now, here's the thing. This one has enough to cover the distance, not only to that one, but to this one. So, technically speaking, this one is actually trying to talk to this one, but this one is transmitting and not receiving. So, this one acts as a kind of a hopping point to this one over here. It's, it's very... <clears throat> nuanced basically you have to be careful where you set them up you have to make sure you don't have any power loops going but they really are all kinds of fun now there's one step further you can go with this let me see if i can get actually let's do it this way so we die I think this is all kinds of fun. <laughs> yeah. This is really, really gets interesting. Now we have colored lightning filling the sky and that great buzzing noise. I really hope this alleviates a lot of the confusion that people have with using these things and getting them set up properly. As I said, plug it into the side to send power. Plug it into the bottom to receive power. Very simple, very straightforward. I'll cover these things more in some other videos in the future, but for now, I think that's going to do it for us. This is Vigram, signing off. Bye-bye.